I welcome each one of you, my fellow pilgrims to heaven for our weekly Bible study. This is on the sixth Sabbath school lesson study. God has been so gracious to us. He brought us into this month of May. Few days are already over. Let us thank the Lord before we open the Bible to learn from the Bible, the sixth Sabbath school lesson study. The title of this sixth Sabbath school lesson study is The Roots of Abraham. The Roots of Abraham. Let's pray. Loving Father, we want to thank you for Jesus and his sacrifice. We want to thank you for every blessing you have showered upon each one of us and our families and our congregations in the last month. Lord, it's because of your special grace we are able to step into this month of May. Take care of us, Lord. Provide all the spiritual as well as physical blessings for your glory and honor. Help us to understand this important lesson, the roots of Abraham. Fill us with your spirit so that we can understand your word. Bless each person who is watching this message and also sharing these thoughts with their local congregation and their colleagues and friends. Bless them, Lord, abundantly. Thank you, Jesus, for this wonderful opportunity to study book of Genesis, especially today from chapter 11 and 12 and on. Because I pray in Jesus' loving name. Hey, please pray for this little town, Baljipeta, and the surrounding villages uh, from which some of our faithful members are planning to come to attend the meeting. Meeting starts every evening. Uh, the street is called Metavari or Metavidi. That is the street name, Meta Street or Metavidi. They call it in local language. This is in our church campus. So please pray for that. And if uh, any one of you are anywhere nearby, and please come so that we can all receive a rich blessing from God. But most of us are far. So please pray so that God will bless this meeting, keep the uh, weather under his control, and also many people can be drawn closer to Jesus, and some people can take a stand to follow Jesus. We want you to pray for the blessing. This week our lesson is the roots of Abraham, which means it focuses on Abraham's family. Often we call this, often we don't focus much on the family. That means his uh, father or grandfather. Many times we don't focus much on that. But definitely that also helps us. This is what we call in English genealogy. The family tree sometimes we call in common language, family tree. So that's why they're using this word, the roots of Abraham. The memory text is found in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8. Abraham obeyed by faith when he was called, which he would receive as inheritance. That means the whole area which he walked around as a pilgrim is going to be his inheritance for his future descendants. This all happened because of faith. All of us know another important aspect that was Abraham's original place where he was born and brought up was, it's called Ur of Chaldi. Some people pronounce this one as Ur of Chaldi because spelling is U-R, Ur of Chaldi or Ur of Chaldi. This is the land of Chaldeans. The moment we hear the word Chaldeans or Chaldeans, some people say, uh, that sounds a big bell in our mind. This is uh, Babylonians because Nebuchadnezzar and uh, his uh, people were Chaldeans or Chaldeans. That's why Abraham comes from that place. But he was a, a Jew, not Chaldean, but he was born and brought up in that area. And if you, anybody wants to visit, where is that place today, the birthplace uh, of Abraham? We have to visit Iraq. All of those places are in Iraq today. The ancient Babylon is the modern Iraq today. This name Abraham, Abraham means exalted father. 
or part who is exalted or father who is on high that is the meaning but later god said abram your name is going to be called from now one verse as abraham abraham not knowing where to go he had faith in god he obeyed god and he left god said abraham those who help you those who bless you i will bless those who are against you those who curse you i will curse them god said this is in uh, genesis chapter 12 so god said i'll be with you you go without asking any further details he went because he knew that god will always do the best god will not let anybody down that's why we know from matthew chapter 7 in the new testament we learn from verse 8 if somebody a son is asking for a fish will the father give a, a snake if the son is asking for a bread will he give a stone no he will give a better bread or better fish then what uh, his son is asking likewise we need to understand this important point always whenever god gives something or says something that is the best for us that's why in the later days canaan is known as the promised land the land of milk and honey there is no real uh, any river or any spring of milk or river or milk and uh, honey they didn't have but when uh, they use this term in the old testament the land of milk and honey which means it has plenty it has plenty that means good grain good fruits and good climate to live that's why no wonder in the time of moses and the israelites you can read that in numbers chapter 13 and 14 when moses sent 12 spies and he said when you come back after spying the land bring some fruits and all of us know one cluster of grapes one bunch of grapes if you want to use the common terminology two men carried then you can imagine how big was that cluster of grapes or the bunch of grapes so we and we can understand at least little bit uh, very nice and fruitful land canon but god said this land where you are a pilgrim just staying here a few days here and few days there but definitely that place is that place is a blessed place i'm going to give this whole land for your future generation your descendants but by that time abraham did not have even uh, any child but still he believed that is the greatness of abraham that is the greatness of abraham So Abraham departed from his father's place in faith. Terah lived for 205 years. I wanted to just uh, see the lifespan of each person. Noah lived for 950 years. After Noah's time, his sons, their lifespan cut down to half. And by the time Terah, by the time of Terah, it was only 200 years. By the time of Abraham, only Abraham lived for 175 years. Drastically, the life lifespan was cut down within a few centuries after the flood. Abraham only lived for 175, whereas Noah lived for 950, Methuselah lived for 969. You can imagine. Now our lifespan has come down to 70. If somebody lives up to 80, so many challenges. Sometimes only they're bedridden. They're just like a living vegetable. So this is what is happening. And often they feel, and the family also feels, though they, did not, uh, they do not say it openly, uh, that person who is bedridden, living like a living vegetable, is only a burden to the family. A burden to the family. When he went there in faith, the first settlement he had was at Bethel. In those days, they called that place Luz. But he named it as Bethel. But when he was, because Abraham never stayed in any one place. He lived only in 
Kent for 100 years. At the age 75, he stepped into cannon. He died at the age of 175, which means for 100 years, he lived only in that tent. He did not build a permanent house. Not because he didn't have money. He had so much money. Uh, more richer than some of the local kings with the gold and silver. But to obey God and his uh, instruction, he did this uh, work. That is, to be a witness in all of those areas, villages and towns. And he lived a nomadic life. He lived a nomadic life. Few days here, few days there. He lived that way. And the temptation was, there was a famine in, in the land of Canaan. And he heard that in Egypt, there is plenty of water, plenty of uh, grass for the animals, plenty of uh, grain there. So he made up his mind to go there. It's because of uh, Nile River. Those days as well as these days, the River Nile is the lifeline for Egypt. So they had. Abraham heard about that. Already God spoke to him uh, a few times by now. He should have contacted God. He should have waited on the Lord, saying, Lord, there is famine here. How can I and all of my flocks and the herds can sustain here? Lord, do something, Lord. And what should I do? Should I go down to Egypt? He did not contact. He did not wait on the Lord for this. He made his own decision. And as a human being, that is a good decision to go down where there is water, where there is grass, where there is uh, food. Yes, because Abraham had something like 1,000 to somewhere around 1,000 to 2,000, 1,000 to 2,000 servants working for him. That's why surely that was something so unique and important. He made a decision. But we need to learn that important uh, uh, spiritual lesson also. Whenever we take an important decision, an important decision, maybe for marriage, maybe for uh, moving for a job to a foreign nation, uh, such an important decision. We need to wait on the Lord with prayer. Otherwise, what happens? It becomes uh, a very, very uh, bitter experience. I know some of us uh, know some of the people who migrated with so much of enthusiasm, went abroad. But because of the social situation, because of the culture there, the family breaks. The family is broken. Then to those close friends and close family members, they say, with so much of enthusiasm, so much of expectation, I came. Here am I. My family is broken. We are divided. I know that ha can happen uh, to any one of us. That's why we need to wait on the Lord uh, to make any major decision then that will be nice. When Abraham moved, according to God's uh, invitation, God's instruction by faith, he also brought his brother, Haran's son was Lot. You remember his brother who died in Haran in uh, Ur of Kaldi? His son was Lot. And he came. But when after the experience of this famine, Abraham came back to Bethel again. We need to learn that important spiritual lessons also. There are some milestones and it is important for us to visit and revisit again those milestones. That means those places that can help. So Abraham came back to live for a few days in Bethel. Then he gave the option to his brother's son, his nephew Lot, saying, we have so many flocks and herds. We don't have any differences. We don't have any problem within ourselves. But our servants, they're having some rough time, tough time. They are disputing with each other. That's why it is better that we divide. You choose which one you want. Whichever place you choose, you go that side. Suppose if you choose eastern side, you go to the eastern side. I'll go to the western side. You can read all of that account in Genesis chapter 13 and 14 and 15. And uh, Genesis chapter 13 was 14 onwards. And Lot opened his eyes and looked up and he could see all around green area with nice 
gardens and like nice crops, uh, well watered, almost it looked like Eden. And he said, I want this place. That was the place Sodom and Gomorrah. And you should have said, uncle, you are the one who brought, you are elder. So you are the eldest. So you choose. Yours is the first choice. I'm young. So whatever the place which you choose, you go there. Then if you want me to go the other side, I will take that other place which is left by you. He did not do that. He chose for himself. We need to learn that important spiritual lesson also. Many times we don't think of any others. Even those who helped us, those who uh, really assisted us, we don't think of them. Only in our selfishness, everything we want, the best for ourselves. Uh, do you also do that? This is what is our problem. And when Lot and his family, first they settled far away from Sodom and Gomorrah. And slowly, slowly they drifted. They were uh, sucked into by the cities, city life, city, some advantages, <coughs> whatever the advantages they had in those days. These days, many of us uh, think, okay, uh, city is good because educational facilities for children, medical facilities for any sickness, and uh, uh, life is uh, much, much easier in the cities. We think that way. So, slowly, slowly, they were sucked into cities and they went. That became a very bitter experience for them in the latter years because his two daughters, at least two, because it says daughters, at least two or more, they married those heathen people in that Sodom and Gomorrah. Then what happened? When angels came in the form of human beings and said, we are going to destroy the entire place by sending the fire tomorrow morning. That's if you have anybody who is close to you, who is your relation, then bring them. So Lot went that uh, night and uh, telling his uh, daughters and son-in-laws, this is what is going to happen tomorrow. These whole uh, cities, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah are going to be destroyed. They mocked him and they did not come. They sent him by mocking. We can understand if the son-in-laws, they were heathen, so they can mock and they did not trust in what he said. But his uh, daughters who were born and brought up in this family who knew the Lord. They also became worldly people. They also did not come. Then what happened next morning? When the fire rained, his daughters also, at least two, you can read that account in Genesis chapter 19, verse 13 and 14, daughters and son-in-laws, at least two or more. So they perished. And also we know as they're walking, angels told, don't look back. And his wife, her heart was only on Sodom and Gomorrah. Maybe her big house, full of furniture, full of nice clothes and all of that. Because they could not carry everything. Maybe some money and some uh, few dresses. That's all they could carry. All the other things she thought, is it really there? Or is it really burning? Her heart was there. So she looked back. She became pillar of salt. So Sodom and Gomorrah left very, very bitter and painful experiences. My brothers and sisters, what are some of those bitter and painful experiences because of the bad choices what you have made? <coughs> regarding your uh, work or regarding your marriage, regarding the house which you built, sometimes they say, oh, uh, I should not have built in this area because all uh, heathen people here and also uh, so much of disturbance here. There's nobody who knows the Lord here. We don't have any... Uh, fellowship here, something like that people feel bad. So, what is that bitter experience what you have because of your wrong choices? Definitely, Lot and his family, his remaining two daughters had that bitter experiences. As the days went by, some enemy kings came. They invaded Sodom and Gomorrah. They defeated and they took all the people as hostages and they took all of their gold and silver and all the valuable things. That was, message was conveyed to Abraham. Somebody told, see your uh, nephew, this is what happened to him. He and his entire family and all the others in Sodom and Gomorrah taken as uh, captives. When uh, Abraham had, he did not have any ill feelings because Lot, after uh, separating from uh, Abraham, he never, we don't have any account that he 
ever came back to meet with his uncle, spend some time. They did not continue that relationship. He cut off the relationship. We don't know why. Maybe because of the influence of his wife? Maybe. So many times, because of the influence of the wife or because of the influence of the husband, they cut off their relationship with other family members. That's not good for God's people. We need to continue our family relationship with friends so that they can be also influenced by the truth what you have, what you follow. So when Abraham had, he had his private security army, which he trained 318 young men who were born and brought up in his camp. If 318 men were born and brought up in his uh, camp, then you can imagine their father and mother, that, be, uh, that, uh, ma that itself makes uh, over 1,000. Then parents uh, did not have only one son in those days. They had other sons and the daughters also. If you put everybody together, many scholars, Bible scholars estimate at least around 2,000 servants in his camp. And he trained them to be the private uh, security because in those days, because Abraham had so much of uh, flocks and cattle and uh, gold and silver, anybody, uh, any thieves can attack Abraham and his camp and loot everything. That's why he maintained a private security army. Immediately he took them that night itself and he heard the message. He did not say, ah, that fellow is not coming to me anymore. That fellow stopped talking to me. That fellow never came to visit me and I'm the one who brought him. He did not have all of those ill feelings. He went to rescue them. Do you also, people with whom you don't have good relationship, when they're in trouble, when they have problem, do you also go to help them? Abraham, such a big and uh, kind heart he had. And he went that night itself and he overtook them and he rescued all the people from Sodom and Gomorrah and their gold and silver also he took. And every good things, whatever they took, the enemies, they left everything and ran away for their lives. When he came back, the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah, they came, thanked Abraham according to the rules in those days, the culture in those days. Anything which you take from the war, this is they call a technical word, booty. Whatever the wealth, whatever the gold or silver or uh, those uh, captives which you can uh, rescue them, all belongs to you. So the servant said, sir, if it is, uh, now only give the people, you take all the gold and silver and everything for yourself. Abraham said, I don't want even a piece of thread. I don't want even a thread from you. Otherwise, one day you will say, Abraham became rich because of these people. My God is there. My God made me rich. I don't want anything. So he did not take anything. We need to learn that important spiritual lesson also. Are you also having that desire, plotting some time to encroach a small piece of land which belongs to your neighbor? Many people are doing that. It is not yours. Somehow you want to grab it. That is not a blessing. Because that land which you may grab, that house, little house which you may grab, that little uh, money which you may grab illegally, which doesn't belong to you, will it stay with you forever? Not at all. Because of such illegal things, we will lose eternal life and heaven. We need to understand this important point. Uh, then we need to learn another important uh, spiritual lesson. That is, Abraham had such a very fine young army, but he never used that young people or his uh, private army security to attack any city, to attack any town, to attack anybody's property, to take it. He never used. Only in this case to rescue Lot and his family and others. He, he did not only bring Lot and his family, he brought all the others also. See how much large heart Abraham has. He had such a big heart. So that's why not only his uh, family members, Lot and his family, though they were not in good terms, good relationship, he brought all the people of Lot, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. We need to be a blessing for all the others. 
but Abraham did not use his private army to take anybody's wealth or to anybody's land, anybody's house. What about you? Are you using your power, your influence, your authority to grab somebody's property or anything? We should not do that one. While Abraham was coming back from this war, rescuing all of those people, Melchizedek met Abraham and he gave him bread and wine, that is grape juice. We read all of that account in Genesis chapter 14. Who was Melchizedek? Two words, Melchi means king, Zedek means righteousness, king of righteousness. We read about him in book of Hebrews chapter 7. Melchizedek, who was a heathen person, but a king of Salem. Salem is a short form or short name for Jerusalem. So he was the king of Jerusalem, which they call in a short form Salem. And he was also the priest of the Most High God. God, he was faithful to the God of the Bible. That's why God used him as the high priest. When he came, Abraham honored him. Abraham accepted him. Abraham respected him. Abraham paid tithes from all of that what he got, that gold and silver and all. He did not take for himself even a thread, piece of thread, but he gave tithe to him. We need to learn that important lesson. Whatever you get from your farm, from your uh, salary or from your business, do you pay faithful tithe to the Lord? And Abraham did not say, I am the chosen one. Why should I pay that one to Melchizedek? He is not chosen one. I am the one chosen one. Everybody should give to me. No, he did not do that. He honored and respected the high priest, the servant of the Lord. We need to do that one. Maybe they are different people, different language, different culture, different caste. Still, we need to honor the servant of God, whoever is ministering faithfully. So, Abraham did all of that. That's why we learned this wonderful exemplar life of Abraham. Abraham obeyed God, had faith, and also he did not have any greed for the land or the money or the property of anybody. He lived an honest life. But when he went down to Egypt because of famine, without consulting God, he, and he landed in a trouble. That uh, king of Egypt known as Pharaoh, any king of Egypt in those days known as Pharaoh, called as Pharaoh, he saw Abraham's wife, Sarah. That was his steps, stepsister. She was 65 years old at that time. Abraham was only 75. That means 10 years gap. Abraham was elder to Sarah 10 years. But at the age of 65 also, she was so pretty. She was so beautiful. Can you imagine how she looked at the age of maybe 20, 25, when she was young? She must be very, very beautiful. Even at the age of 60, they appreciated. 65, age of 65, they appreciated all the servants. And Pharaoh took her to be one of his concubines. But God intervened. So, without harming her, without uh, raping her, without doing anything bad to her, Pharaoh returned Sarah to Abraham. So, Abraham should have thought, because Satan brought all of this temptation and problem. One side, famine. In my place, Haran, nice place, plenty of grass, plenty of water, no famine there, I should go back. He did not think that way. God called me, whether it is famine or pestilence, I am going to be here. But only for a short while, till that famine is over, I will go down to Egypt. Then he did not go back. He came back again. And also the, another calamity, his wife was abducted, taken. He did not say, now I have calamity after calamity, problem after problem. I should go back. This is not the place for me to stay. He did not have any discouragement. And God performed the miracle. She was returned to him without any harm to her. That's why my brother and sister, we need to learn that important spiritual lesson also. 
do you also face? Are you also facing problem after problem in your life? Problem, any problem, financial problem, health problem, family problem, whatever the problem, problem for the job, problem after problem Satan may bring. If you stay close to Jesus, if you have faith like Abraham, God will solve all of those problems and will honor you and will bless you. Abraham became richer than all the local kings and Abraham became an outstanding person and it is said Abraham is the father of faith and a friend of God. Can you imagine a friend of God? And the big test came in his life. We are going to study that one in the following lessons. But in Genesis chapter 22, his son, only son, promised son, Isaac. When, he, when did he get his promised son? God promised him at the age of 75, I will give you children. They will be like the stars of the sky and the sand of the sea. But Abraham waited in faith 25 years because the promised son was born when he was 100 years old. 25 years old, he waited in faith. Do you wait a little longer for some promise of God to be fulfilled to you? Wait in faith by faith. Then there is also another aspect. That is, God wanted to test his faith. He told in Genesis chapter 22, Abraham, your only son, your promise son, offer to me as a burnt offering, burnt sacrifice. And he was ready. He took him to Mount Moriah, which was three days journey. And he, lived, he made the altar in day. He made his son to lie down. He was not a small boy. He must be definitely a teenager. And the teenager also so obedient. He did not run away. And uh, he lifted his uh, knife to offer him as a burnt offering. But God said, Abraham, don't do any harm. I know your faith now. In the beginning, yes, he had some uh, weak faith. He told the Pharaoh, she is my sister. But he started growing day by day in faith. He came to that faith level that he was willing to sacrifice his only son as a burnt offering. No wonder Abraham is the father of faith. Abraham is the friend of God. We need such a faith in this ending of the end time. That's why my brothers and sisters, do you have such a faith? If it is your decision, to have faith like Abraham, not knowing what is going to happen tomorrow, he took the step in faith because trusted in God. We need that much faith to take a step of faith for God's glory. If that is your decision, join with me. I want to pray. But I want to request you to please uh, pray for this revival meeting and my travel so that I can go safely and come back safely. Already a small team of uh, students who helped me in this uh, revival meetings are there on the way in the train. And tonight, uh, because of the uh, shortness of time, and I have to take the flight to go. Pray for uh, all the arrangements and the meetings for God's glory. Let's pray. Loving Father, we want to thank you for the life of Abraham. Help us to learn spiritual lessons from the life of Abraham so that we can live faithfully like Abraham in this ending of the end time. Lord, take care of these revival meetings so that it will be for your glory and honor. Bless the people who are in need and bless those who are sharing this message with others. Thank you, Jesus. Until we meet again in the next lesson, let your blessing and peace and protection be with each one of us. Because I pray in Jesus' loving name. Amen. God be with you. God bless you.